Fantastic. To get us started tonight, the Beatles and I saw her standing there. Welcome along. Eight minutes past seven. Halloween. All sorts of things are going to happen tonight, particularly over the next three hours on the show. Let, let's give you a bit of a taster. Between nine and ten, it's folk. So let's find out what Jeff Wall's got in store for us there. I don't know uh, whether he's going to have a few spooky tracks in, but we'll find out later on. Certainly going to be spooky until nine o'clock. Between eight and nine, we've got a series of ghost stories for you from around the region. So listen out for those. And also, my guest this evening is none other than the High Priest of British White Witches. Tell you a bit more about that later on, but his name's Kevin Carolyn. And, um, yeah, I'm rather scared. I'm in here on my own, so don't disappear because I'm going to need someone to hold my hand. Now, between seven and eight, it's a Wednesday night, even though it's Halloween, so we've got a very spooky version of the truth for you. Now, uh, so far, the score is 5 Four to the women. So the guys are catching up fast. Um, they could make it a draw this week if the men win. But uh, if you've never listened to this before, let me tell you what it's about. It's a series of bizarre and weird facts. You've got a clock to work against, and I fire the questions at you, and you just have to answer true or false. So anybody can play it. You've got a 50-50 chance, and uh, it's the questions and the answers that are more interesting than whether you're not, you get it right. So, qualifying question tonight is true or false? Halloween is based on an ancient holiday, All Hallows' Eve. It was the one day of the year where dead spirits were allowed to walk the earth. So that's the question, of course, this evening, the qualifying question that will get you on to air to play in a round of the truth. We, all, we need to know, true or false, Halloween is based on an ancient holiday, All Hallows' Eve. It was one day of the year where dead spirits were allowed to walk the earth. I'm going to give you a phone number again for that, but also, if you want to give us a shout, let us know what you're doing uh, this Halloween. Maybe you've been out trick-or-treating with your mum or dad, or maybe mum and dad have been out with you. Anything that's been happening, do let us know. Gotta write a classic Thanks, Pete. Back with you shortly. Uh, Pete will be keeping us updated on the travel every 15 minutes between now and nine. If you're out and about, hope you're having a good time and hope you've noticed that fantastic moon tonight as well. It's a real Halloween moon, I have to say. Now then, we've got Scott on the line from Brighton. Hello, Scott. I just didn't have to go. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. How about you? Yeah, yeah, good. Chilling with the butt, I think, is a professional today. Sorry? Chilling with the butt is a professional today. Chilling with a bird. Yeah. That's a beer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. See, I know these things. <laughs> Not so much of a lady as maybe I might pretend to be. I don't believe that for a second. N no, well, there we go. It all depends what the definition of a lady is, you see, doesn't yeah, it? Exactly. <laughs> anyway, Scott, good to have you on the line. Have you had anybody coming around for trick-or-treats yet? Uh, no, not as yet, but I've got um, a whole host of scary movies here that I'm going to watch later with the bag of and um, a few bowls of wine. So. Scary movies? Yeah, exactly. You name it, I've got it. You name it, you've got it. Yeah. Fantastic. So what are you going to watch later on then? Um, I've got The Fog Out and oh, uh, gosh. Hellraiser, so I'm probably going to scare myself with it. Are you going to watch these on your own? Yeah, I am. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just true. scared talking to you on the line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, well, well done for getting that qualifying question correct. Don't give us the answer, because obviously everybody else has still got to get that if they want to get through. Okay. Um, you're first up tonight, particularly brave for the guys, and your time starts, <laughs> she says, now. Right. It's very Halloweeny tonight. True or false, anteaters are the only mammals to have no teeth. True. True? Yeah. You are spot on. Well done. True or false, wigs from the 17th century were made from goat hair. I'm afraid that one's true. Try this. True or false? Your skin gets a third of all your blood. True. It is, even though skin is just two millimetres thick. Spot on. Okay, true or false? There are 10 to 11 sheep for every person in Australia. Where do they get these from? Uh, false. You're right. There are eight to nine. <laughs> Blimey. True or false? Whales and dolphins sleep one side of their brains at a time. Sorry, can we one side? <laughs> Did you think I said eat? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say false. 
So it's whales and dolphins sleep one side of their brains at a time. Yeah, yeah. Well. you think it's false. Well, believe it or not, it's, it's true. actually true. Um, the other side um, is kept awake to watch for danger. Oh, right. Amazing, isn't it? I think I must be a whale then. You must be a whale. <laughs> All right. So only part of your brain goes to sleep at night, does it? Yeah, that's right. That's because of the sort of films you watch, Scott. Exactly. Scott, I've got another question for you, and uh, this is a bonus question. So far, you've scored three, so that's pretty good, actually. I think the highest score we've ever had is either four or maybe five. So that's quite a good score to kick us off on. I need to know, true or false, Halloween is the witch's new year and is called Sawen. Do you think that's true or false? You think it's true. OK, we'll note that down and it might just swing the scores just before 8 o'clock. But thank you very much indeed for calling in. OK. And, um, yeah, you just look after yourself tonight. All right, then. In fact, too. give me a call tomorrow. I'd like to know that you're still there. <laughs> take care. All right, take Bye care. Bye-bye. That's uh, Scott in Brighton kicking the guys off tonight with a score of three. We're having a very spooky version of the truth this evening. If you want to get onto the line, come and have a chat and uh, have a go at this. You've just got to answer true or false to a load of bizarre questions. Then uh, you need to answer the qualifying question. If you're not sure on this, ring anyway because you've got a 50-50 chance of getting onto the line. We need to know true or false, Halloween is based on an ancient holiday, All Hallows' Eve. It was the one day of the year where dead spirits were allowed to walk the earth. So that's the qualifying question if you want to play on the truth tonight. Halloween is based on an ancient holiday, All Hallows' Eve. One day of the year where dead spirits were allowed to walk the earth. Give us a call. This is the Eurythmics. At last, we've got a lady on the line, Janet from Rotherfield. Hello, Janet. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Now, what's going on in Rotherfield, considering the fact it's Halloween tonight? Um, I wouldn't know. Really? You've no, not had anybody knocking at the door yet? No, we're well, I'm coming round to see you then, because you'll have lots of treats left. We're at the back of beyond, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the place to be on Halloween, really, it isn't is. it? It is. It is all very dark, though. Can you see the moon from where you are? The what? The moon. Yes, it's a nice big full one. Mm, and it's, is it yellow where you are? Sort of, yes. It was very yellowy earlier on when I looked outside here at Broadcasting House and there's this amazing clock tower going up at the side of it. Ah. And it was just amazing. It was like a Disney movie or something. It was Sounds absolutely great. Sounds good. It is, it is. But then again, I'm very interested in this place, Rotherfield. But uh, let's see what you can do for the girls with this. Have you heard this quiz much before? I have, yes. You have, yes. so you're feeling quite confident. Um, no, not really. OK, we'll, well we've got some special spooky, the truth, quiz right. music for you tonight. So, okay. uh, Janet in Back of Beyond Rotherfield, here we go. True or false, an American quarter has 129 ridges on its edge. That's yes. the coin. You think false. True. You think true? Yes. It's actually false. It ah. has 119. Ah. Try this. Mars has the shortest day of all the planets. True or false? True. That one's false. It's no. actually Jupiter. Let's try you're again. Well, am I? No, you're doing all right. True or false? The Royal House of Saudi Arabia has close to 10,000 princes and princesses. Wow. True. You're absolutely spot on. Here we go. True or false? Cinnamon was once more valuable than gold. True. You're absolutely right. True or false? You get a bell for that. The average child in the United States... My goodness, there's a bit of a storm blowing in here. The average child in the United States will wear down 730 crayons by his or her fifth birthday. Who find these, finds these things out? That's what I want to know. Um, false. You're right. <laughs> But do you know why you're right? Uh, probably because they're too busy on computers. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's more naughty than that in terms of the way the question's phrased because uh, it's, it's, it's true, but by their 10th birthday. Ah, uh, So you were correct because ah. we said by the 50th, you see. Right. They're very naughty questions, aren't they? <laughs> what else did we have there? Cinnamon was once more valuable than gold. You said true for that, did you? Yes. Yep, and uh, that's, it comes from the inner bark of Sri Lanka's laurel. Did you know that? Yes. You did? How yes. did you know that? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Probably something you pick up or you read about at some time or other. Mm, yeah, somewhere along the line. Yes. And then we had the bit about the princes and princesses, that yes. true, in the Royal House of Saudi Arabia. And the two at the beginning, um, when you had a bit of a short start and then you stormed ahead, 
Um, an American quarter actually has 119 ridges on its oh. edge. And Mars, I said, has the shortest day of all the planets, true or false, and it's false. It's actually Jupiter, which oh, right. manages to complete one rotation in nine hours and 55 minutes. But I tell you what, a bit of pressure didn't do you too bad at all. No. <laughs> because you ended up with three, which is exactly the same as Scott from Brighton. So right. the scores are even so far. But we do have a bonus question for you to yeah. answer. Uh, you'll find out whether you got this right or wrong later on, but I need you to tell me true or false. Halloween is the witch's new year and is called Sawen. False. You think that's false, okay? Yeah. Alison Leslie, producing tonight, is putting that down as we speak. So thanks for your call, Janet. Okay. And uh, keep much. listening just before 8 o'clock, see whether you've uh, won our, the individual prize or not. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, good nice night. to Have speak to you. You too. Bye bye. It's not quite what we wanted. We actually wanted Pete Edgler on the travel, so we've oh, got hello. him now. Hello. <laughs> that's all right. It's all right. I was, Bit I, of new I was, technology, that's all it is. Yeah, I was just trying to name that tune that you just started to play. Was it something like Cabaret? I've got a feeling it was Frank Sinatra with was Chicago. It? Oh, it's Chicago, Chicago, wasn't it? Chicago. Yeah. yeah, that's but, the one. But really, it's travel. <laughs> oh, a sung introduction. There we go. Oh, what am I going to do? Uh, the M25 has started to ease, but it's uh, still busy for this time of night. The heavy sea travel. <laughs> That's all right. <coughs> is it that damp and dusty atmosphere that you're working in there? Because it is a castle, isn't it? Oh, yes. Where you yeah, are tonight. Sh you're not broadcasting from your normal place. No, I'm in Chateau Godston. Chateau Godston. Very nice indeed. Hey, when you were younger, what did you used to do on Halloween? Um... Well, I'm too old to have been trick-or-treating. I mean, I used to be, look forward to bonfire night, I think, more than anything else. But uh, when, I was, uh, when I was a young limb, I used to do discos, and I remember doing a, um, a Halloween disco in the Pyramid Centre in Portsmouth. That's not advertised, because it was a long time ago. Um, and uh, they, they basically lined us up with a load of sound effects and ghoulish music to play throughout the night. Charming. Well, mm. I tell you, we've got a few ghoulish tracks coming up, but a couple of them have refused to play tonight, which is quite interesting, really, isn't it? It makes oh. you wonder what's going on. Are you going to do the Monster Mash? Am I? I? Are you um, going to do the Road to Hell? Uh, well, we may. We may. Mm. But I'll tell you what we are going to do later on, or who we're going to speak to. Kevin Carolyn, High Priest of British White Witches, on oh. the show just after okay. 8 o'clock. Where's so, my clover uh, garlic? Yeah, yeah, quite. Where's mine, more <laughs> like? As I said, I am in here on my own, so uh, you just stay where you are okay. at Chateau Godstone. Okay. Speak no to problem. you soon. Okay. Bye. bye bye. There we go. Pete Edgeless keeping updated, is updated on the travel every 15 minutes now, right through till 9 o'clock. Okay, we're playing a spooky version of the truth tonight. There's a qualifying question if you want to get through on the lines. We need a few guys, lots of girls ringing in tonight. Um, I don't know where the guys are, what they're out doing, but uh, do give us a call. Halloween is based on an ancient holiday, All Hallows' Eve. It was one day of the year where dead spirits were allowed to walk the earth. We need to know, is that true or false? That's the qualifying question to get you onto the line. And of course, don't forget my guest this evening, tonight, even. Oh. I'm sounding scared already. Is Kevin Carolyn, High Priest of the British White Witches between eight and nine. Great name for a band, wasn't it? The Love Affair and Everlasting Love. 22 minutes to 8, BBC Local Radio across the South and the South East. Halloween, in case you hadn't guessed, in case you've been asleep all day and you've just, just woken up. Yeah, yeah, watch what you're doing. We've got Richard on the line from Bournemouth. Hi there, Richard. Hiya. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Uh-huh. Anything special going on near you? Have you had any taps on the door or strange no. things going on? Nothing at all. Nothing at all? No. Do you believe in all this um, kind of witches, ghosts, wizards and all that sort of thing? No, but it's a good excuse to get dressed up. It's a good excuse to get dressed up. Oh, yeah. what are we wearing tonight in Bournemouth then? Uh, nothing tonight, but um, I was dressed up as a, a vampire the other night for, for a party. So. Really? <laughs> ah, I once dressed up an ex-boyfriend as a devil once. It was great. What did you wear as a vampire then? Did you have the fangs and a cloak and everything? Yeah, and fake blood and... Also, so. Really? So you were yeah. that horrible, horrible chap walking around, like, crunching on the blood capsules and things like that? That's the one, yeah. Nasty. So, uh, oh, great. Was that a proper Halloween party then? Yeah, it was. Yeah, was there a prize for the best dressed? No, there wasn't, unfortunately. Oh, dear. Well, let's see if we can win you one tonight on The Truth. You All know right. what you're doing with this? Um, I presume it's just true and false. True or false? Don't worry if you don't know, because some of these questions are really, really are quite tough. 
and they're quite naughty as well. So I guess the best advice I can give is to just keep going. Brilliant. All right, here yeah. we go then. True or false, Texas is the only state in America that is allowed to fly its state flag at the same height as the US flag. True. Good start. True or false, each king in a deck of playing cards represents a great king from history. False. You reckon that one's false? It's actually true. Tell you why a bit later on. True or false, there are more than 20 million bricks in the Empire State Building. True. It's actually false. There's 10 million. Try this one. True or false, Saturn's rings are briefly invisible to astronomers every four years. False! It's actually 14 years. Oh, we were got. We were got. I'm sorry, even a vampire couldn't stop. Couldn't stop what was going to happen to us there. But uh, just adding up what you actually got there. Is that right? Did we only get one? Oh, what yeah. a shame. What a shame. I, I know, I feel, since you're a vampire, I feel like I should give you an extra point. But you never know, you might get one on the bonus. Let's just go back over the uh, track. It was the first one you got right, wasn't it? Yeah. So you got a good start. And then we said each king in a deck of playing cards represents a great king from history. You thought that was false. It's actually true. Spades is King David. I didn't know this. Clubs, Alexander the Great. The King of Hearts is uh, Shalamanja. Is that right? And no, Diamonds. Not. Diamonds is Julius Caesar. Yeah. Blimey. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I quite like that. Sorry, That's I didn't realise that. I never realised that. It wasn't too good for you. No, absolutely. 10 million bricks in the uh, Empire State Building, not 20 million. Should have known that, of course you should, of shouldn't course, you? Yeah. And uh, Saturn's rings, briefly invisible to astronomers every 14 years, not every four years. I think you had some naughty questions there, actually. Yeah. But, and uh, some bonus points. Exactly. You may, yeah, you may pick something up. Let's see if uh, Annie's in a good mood tonight. Let's uh, see how you can do with the bonus question. We need to know true or false. Halloween is the witch's new year and is called Sawen. What do you reckon? True. You think that's true? Okay, all right. Alice and Leslie will record your, scar your score down even for you, and uh, we'll see how we do. But thank you very much, Richard. All right, thank you. Do you like the water, boys? Yeah, I do. All right, well, I'll tell you what. Instead of a bonus point, you can have this track all to yourself. Brilliant. All right, cheers thank then. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Yep, here is the water, boys, with the whole of the moon. It looks fantastic tonight. Make sure you have a look at it. Water Boys and the Whole of the Moon. Don't forget, just after eight, Kevin Carolyn will be joining me on the show, talking about the roots of witchcraft and their place in the 21st century. Ah. On the travel now. Oh. Oh, don't do that in a low voice. We've got hey, Pete Edgler. Yeah, there's some very strange things happening tonight. I'll, I'll hand over to you. Oh, welcome back to the dungeons here at Chateau Godston. It's by far the safest place <laughs> as the ghosts and ghoulies walk the ramparts. <laughs> the M25 continues to recover from earlier problems, but it's still busy for the Type 27 at Drusilla's roundabout with traffic affected in both directions. More travel from me just before the news at 8 o'clock. This is Pete Edgler for BBC Travel in a cold dungeon. Oh, oh, has something oh. happened or are you oh. still there? No, I'm still here. I'm just shivering. That's OK. I scared, scared myself. What do you mean? <laughs> You're a crazy man. I thought it was a crazy lady. Oh, well, well, we'll get on well together then. Well, certainly. <laughs> all right. D don't call me tonight, will you? Just uh, every 15 minutes. That's all I can take, you see. <laughs> OK, fair enough. All right. Be Edgela oh. back again every 15 minutes right the way through till 9 o'clock if you're driving. That's the number if you want to uh, get in with the last chance of playing the truth tonight. A bit of a spooky version of the truth. Um, the scores so far, incidentally, Scott and Richard for the guys have scored four. Janet on her own has scored three for the girls. So um, I guess it's down to the next lady that we get on air. If she scores more than one, then the girls are going to win again, aren't they? Or they might, because we've still got to take into account the bonus questions um, that we've been asking as well. But if you would like to get on, here's a last chance for you. We need to know, true or false, Halloween is based on an ancient holiday, All Hallows' Eve. It was the one day of the year where dead spirits were allowed to walk the earth. What do you think? True or false? Mm. 
Mm, fantastic. Brian Adams, um, Please Forgive Me. I was just wondering whether that was one of my favourite Brian Adams tracks, and then I started having an argument in my head between that one and many of his others. So uh, <laughs> I don't want to I want to stop that. Let's speak to Hilda in Newport Pagnell. Hello, Hilda. Good evening. Hi there. Newport Pagnell. Now, I have to say, for a traveller, it's famous because of the service station, isn't it, really? Yes, it's famous for the roadways at the moment. Oh, as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's all travel where you are, is it? Okay, yeah. well, um, very brave coming on last for the girls. I don't want to put any pressure on you, but you actually only need to score one tonight. All oh, right. For the girls to win. Aha. Uh -huh. But let's see what you can do, all right? Right. Here we go. Your time starts now. Aha. Uh -huh. True or false, Elvis Presley's favourite food was meatloaf. False. You're right. It was actually fried peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Ah. True or false, King Tutankhamun's tomb contained four coffins. True. You think that's true? You are spot on. Ah. True or false? Before 1850, golf balls were made of leather and were stuffed with feathers. True. You're right. Let's keep going. True or false? While in Alcatraz, Al Capone was an inmate or was inmate number 105. Probably false. You're spot on. Ah. And try this. True or false? Earth is 100. Oh. And 4,600 million years old. Ah, probably false. You're right. Ah, it's my lucky day today. You are superb. Yeah, it's actually 4,600 million years ah, old. I thought it was a bit older, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're a very clever lady, I have ah, to say, in Newport I'm, I'm just lucky today. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm lucky at the moment. I wasn't so lucky today. Really? No. What happened today? Bicy uh, the, the chain came out of my bicycle and I had to fix it. The chain came out of your bicycle. <laughs> and then I pinched my finger in the door, so it's about time I had a bit of good luck today. Really? Yes. Blimey. What would have been a thing today, you see, is for your bike to turn into a broomstick. That would have been all right, and you'd have got there faster. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, sorry, I always thought that was a fantastic scene in The uh, Wizard of Oz, ah. when the bike turns into a broomstick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Never mind. You're all right. You've done pretty well tonight. Five. Oh, thank you. That's fantastic. So, what's happening now? What's happening now? Well, we're totting up the scores, and I've also got a bonus question to ask you as well. Oh. So, you could even end up with six at the end of this. Oh. This is shocking. We need to know, true or false, Halloween is the witch's new year, and it's called Samhain. What do you reckon, true or false? Oh. Probably it... true, or it could be true. Mm-hmm. Probably not, but it's... I said true. You say true. Okay, we'll find out very shortly whether you were correct with that. But uh, whether you were correct with that or not, you've done extremely well, Hilda. For the girls, you've scored five. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can I ask you something? What frequency are you on? I was in the car when 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 uh, uh, when I was listening to your program, and I can't, I couldn't remember what it was. Now, I... which area are you in? Newport Pagnell. In Newport Pagnell. Yeah. And um, I have got a radio times and all of the frequencies. I just asked for, asked for these myself the other day because we're actually on five different stations tonight. Ah. So keep listening, and I will certainly give out the frequency for you. I think it'll be BBC Radio Oxford that you're needing, but I'll give the frequency out uh, very shortly. Okay. All right. All right. Keep listening. Thank you very Cheers much. Cheers for the call. Thank you. Bye-bye, Hilda. Bye-bye. Let's go over to the travel with Pete Edgler. Hello. No accents this time. Uh, 15 minutes, Pete Edgler for BBC Travel. Thanks, Pete. Okay. On the way, just after eight, of course, my guest is Kevin Carolyn, High Priest of British White Witches. It's eight o'clock with the latest news, Ola O'Donovan. Thank you, Justine. Good evening. The Prime Minister... Well... Is it a chilly welcome or a warm welcome tonight? Good to have you listening in anyway. Uh, Kevin Carolyn, High Priest of British White Witches, will be joining me between 8 and 9 tonight. We've also got a few ghost stories coming up for you as well and a few questions, so stick around from the, for those. They're uh, from areas all over the region. Got an answer for Hilda as well. I was wanting to know the frequency, I believe, for BBC Radio Oxford. 95.2 Hilda. And I've also got some good news for you as well because you're actually the individual winner this week of The Truth and you're also the top scorer of all time as well. Previously, the top score was held by Andy from Slough who had managed to score four. You got five this week. So you're this week's individual winner. But let me just take you back through those questions again. We asked the qualifying question, true or false, Halloween is based on an ancient holiday, All Hallows' Eve. It was the one day of the year where dead spirits were allowed to walk the earth. Well, the answer to that was true, in case you were wondering. And um, in terms of scores, well, the women scored eight this week and the men scored four. But then we did ask a bonus question. 
The bonus question was Halloween is the witch's new year and is called Samhain. And we wanted to know, is that true or false? Or if we just, you know, is it true or did we just make it up? Well, it is actually true. Halloween is the witch's new year and it is called Samhain. It's actually spelled S-A-M-H-I-A-N, okay? So that was true. So that altered the scores. The women ended up with nine and the men ended up with six. So, overall, this week, the women won. And in terms of weeks gone by, the running total, the women are still in the lead with 6-4. And Hilda, of course, you were tonight's individual winner. Fancy something else a bit spooky? This is the specials. Mm, ghost Town from the specials. Now, I just want you to dim the lights down, grab your cocoa or whatever you're drinking tonight and get comfy because Antoinette Wolven, the head cus custodian at Portland Castle, is uh, going to tell us some spine-chilling ghost stories. In August 1999... A bit nasty, really. Incidentally, if you visit Portland Castle this week, you can hear more of their hair-raising stories. In front of a roaring log fire in the castle kitchen. That's very tempting, isn't it? There's a number if you'd like more details on that. 01305 820539. Chris Rea, of course, with The Road to Hell. Well, whatever you're doing tonight, if you fancy giving us a call and letting us know about it, then uh, please do. You can also email me, justine.gale at bbc.co.uk. The emails are up and running. And just to remind you, with that ghost story there from Portland Castle, if you want to hear more of those stories in front of a roaring log fire, you might be in front of one now, but uh, this will actually be in the kitchen of the castle. This is the number to call, 01305 82 0539 And let's go on to the roads and find out about them from Godstone Castle. That's right, tonight, isn't it? Chateau Godstone. Oh, Chateau Godstone, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. We might, might, it's not just an ordinary castle, my dear. Um, the, M20, the M25 is much better than the Hedgehog for BBC travel back in me chateau. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Okay. No problem, no problem, mm. my dear. Oh, I see. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to get that in French, you see, with you going all French oh, and oh, Francais tonight with your chateau. Crikey, I can pas probably... Pro pas problem? Uh, yeah, I can't speak That'd French. that be right? I can't uh, speak yeah, French. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah, uh. yeah la bicyclette del bel size and all that. Like. Absolutely. All right, <laughs> speak to you again shortly. Right. <laughs> He's a spooky man, Pete Edgeler, on the travel tonight. Every 15 minutes, so three more travel reports to come up from him, but uh, we're not very far away from tonight's guest, the High Priest of British White Witches, Kevin Carolyn. He'll be explaining to us all about the roots of witchcraft, its place in the 21st century, and um, black cats, the meaning of witches' hats, and all the rest of it will be in there. So uh, stay right where you are and hold my hand very tightly. This is Frank Sinatra with uh, Witchcraft. Frank Sinatra and a bit of witchcraft. Ah, well, it's 22 minutes past eight. BBC Local Radio across the south and the southeast, and it's Halloween. So, who else could we have on the line other than the high priest? of British White Witches. Welcome to the show, Kevin Carolyn. Hi, Kevin. Good evening. Sounds Hi. a bit drafty where you are. It does a bit, doesn't <laughs> it? You know, I, you know, uh, you know. It's 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 getting better. It's um, it's, it's just that door over there. They need to put a draft excluder along the bottom of it. Got it. Yeah. Well, I don't think got... it's anything to do with it being the thirty-first of October. No. Well, you've got a nice night for it. Cause we've got full moon tomorrow night, so Absolutely. Halloween and uh, you know, very magical time. Yeah, indeed. Because full moon doesn't always automatically fall there, does it? Um, no, it doesn't. Actually, there's two in November. The next one's on the thirtieth, and. Um, People have been asking me all day, you know, is Halloween special? Mm. Um, to me, well, not really. It's a, it's more of a, a party day. Right. Um, I've been ready for uh, a few kiddies in my robe and a, a horri horri horrifying-looking mask. Mm. 
Hmm. Um, but none of them have turned up. I think they've all got the wind of who we are. <laughs> ah, well, well, maybe. Because uh, Halloween, of course, is regarded as an evil celebration. Yeah, I, I think the, the most evil thing about it, is, there's two things I can say there, is people have more to worry about uh, from the living than they do from the dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and the second one is the nuisance trick-or-treating. Because I know some uh, police forces have actually been issuing posters to elderly people to put in their windows. Right. Uh, no trick or treat, and you know if if they have any hassle from kiddies, then they um, automatically call the police, and the police don't mind going out to um, sort the problem. Right. So you're it, saying you don't you don't like that then, or you do? No, I, I don't like it. It's, it's, it's an import. I mean, um, as I say, Halloween is the beginning of the Celtic New Year, if you like, Samhain. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've never actually experienced it with um, lots of leaves on the trees and um, been able to sunbathe during the day. <laughs> <laughs> right. So some nature is definitely um, being messed with somewhere, I think. Yeah, well, it's been very, very warm today, hasn't it? Indeed. It has indeed, yeah. In, yeah, I looked and I thought, is that the moon or is that the sun coming up? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it does feel quite magical, Oh, yeah, I well, it, say. It's, it's the time of year. I mean, there are two things that your listeners can try. Um, one of them is if you look in a mirror and the moon is reflecting into a room where the mirror is, right. you're supposed to be able to see a future loved one. A future loved one. A future loved one, someone that you're going to get married Give to. Give me or a something. mirror. <laughs> um, the other, the other way of doing it is to actually look into the reflection of a puddle, uh, but make sure there's no fast-moving cars going past. You know, because that could get a very wet hobby. Yeah. But, but these things, they stem back uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of years. And of course, I, I've fallen um, in with this Harry Potter stuff that's going on. Um, particularly with um, Warner Brothers and the film. I don't know if you've heard about that at all. I have. I know that there's um, a bit of a... You feel there's some mistakes in the film at the moment. Yeah, I mean, what a lot of people um, don't know is that when... I think we've got some trick-or-treaters. <laughs> uh, what a lot of people don't know is that when, you know, the little kiddies are out with their broomsticks tonight, um, the broomstick is actually an old fertility thing. I won't go into detail, but it's a, a tradition where women used to jump up and down in fields, and the higher they could jump, uh, the higher the crops were supposed to grow. Right. Um, and, of course, you never see boys riding broomsticks. No. Uh, you get the drift of that. But... Uh, I've got my um, broomstick and everything set up here. I've got my pumpkin cut out. You know, it's, it's really to, to, to go with the tradition. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, where we live, I mean, the neighbours um, know all about the stuff we do anyway, but they expect us to be the Adams family, so we play up to it a bit. Right, um, so you're but, having a bit of a tease with it. Oh, yeah, I mean, we've got all nice little Halloween decorations and things in the window. Right. Um, we have got some new neighbours who have moved in across the road, and they, they were taken to staring across for some reason. I can't imagine why, but... <laughs> no, well, yeah, it beats um, me. And, of course, they, they got they uh, got a real treat this morning. So we had GMTV here um, filming this live, so uh, that was quite fun. But the real the real traditions of magic and witchcraft, uh, they're as rife now, in the, or, or if not more rife now, in the 21st century than they've ever been. And, you know, it's amazing that the average person, probably many of your listeners, you know, have had some sort of spooky story that mm-hmm. has occurred in their life. And at some point, you know, they, they must have come across, you know, making a wish or, or something very simple. Right. Well, I've got a question for you. Okay. My first question really is, what exactly is a white witch? Because um, I think that, you know, if you're the high priest of British white witches, then perhaps you can sort of tell us about that, because it sounds like something quite special. Well, well, I'm actually a goodie. Let's put it that way, first of all. So there are good witches and bad witches? Oh, yes. I mean, it's nice that there's programmes on, on the TV, you know, like Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And, mm. uh, and how do you know that you're a witch? Well, at the age of five years old, I could actually tell people things that would happen to them. Um, and I told a chap he would fall out of a tree and break his arm, which he did the following day. And I was actually hauled before the school vicar and headmistress, and they, they literally said I had the devil inside me. Right. To a five-year-old. So I went home, um, told my mother. Uh, she went up to school the following day, and there's all sorts of um, incantations, um, not in Latin. <laughs> so it, it just progressed from there. You know, I, I do have this gift that sometimes is a bit of a curse. Um, you know, because I can read people. And I don't know, do, do, does this um, program actually go as far down as into the Dorset area? Yes, they do receive us there, yes. Ah, yes, because I, I did a, a lot of stuff on, on the Cern Abbas Giant a few years ago, and I, I'm still using that place now. It's, it's got fertility energies and powers. Right. And I helped a couple down there. Um, they were from um, Dorchester, and they'd been trying to conceive for five years. 
Bath and, you know, it's either IVF or, or trick or treat or something. Uh, sorry, trick or treat, I got thrown away then. Um, IVF or, um, you know, adoption. Right. Um, and they um, chose to, you know, try me sort of thing. And whether by coincidence or magic, ten months later, um, they had a little baby boy. Right. Um, who's coming up for three now, I think. Right. So uh, you'll say, do you choose to be a good witch then? Yes, I mean... You think that if you wanted to do bad things, you could? We're tapping into a very neutral power. Um, it's, the only way I can describe it is either like electricity mm -hmm. um, or like the force in Star Wars. You can actually use it um, either way, for good or for, e uh, for, good or for evil. And there's an, as an inbuilt thing, I mean, I've, I've never tried to, um, you know, do anything nasty. Um, but there seems to be some sort of inbuilt thing in me anyway that um, I wouldn't be able to. And yet all my positive powers that go out to love and, um, you know, getting people back together. Um, mm. Even, you know, helping people through, you know, kiddies, you know, or young people through their college exams and everything. And whether it's a placebo effect that goes into their mind or whether it's you know, the real power of magic, you know, I do have a very high success rate. Right. Okay. So, so what you're saying is whichever way you're doing good, so whether it is for real or whether it's a placebo effect, then you're doing yeah, good. Yeah, well, I mean... Because I mean, you can't prove, you can't... There's not, no tests or anything, scientific tests you can do to prove this, is there? No, I will tell you something funny, though. A, a leading woman's magazine... Um, published an article about the Cern Abyss Giant. And a couple about of the... Cern Abyss Giant, that's the, the, the hill figure in Dorset where right. it is supposed to have fertility-giving powers. Oh, right, sort of yes. Um, and a couple of months after the article was published in, in that one, um, another magazine phoned me up and said, right, we're going to put you to the test. We're going to, you know, prove that this stuff doesn't work. And they set me seven tasks um, to actually do, um, to make happen within three weeks. One of which I turned down because it was actually um, one of the managing directors of, of the magazine who was actually being bankrupted for gambling. <laughs> um, so I thought, well, if he comes into you know, finance, then he's just going to re-gamble it. So I went on with the other six, and they had to do a complete reversal because all six actually uh, came about. Um, I've actually got that contested in a, in a woman's magazine. You know, So that's one thing. But there are no real scientific tests. But you and think that's the, the most significant thing you've done? Well, I think the significant things um, that I've done are the fact that they, they do pop up virtually everywhere in the media. Uh, and I am called in by some leading organisations, including Eurostar, um, mm -hmm. to cast a spell to stop any further accidents in the Channel Tunnel, you know, the disaster rate of the, of the fire. Um, also that's a bit of a tall order, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know, but it, it, that was... But if you're um, a good witch, should you not be able to do that? I did do it. You did? I did. Uh, and also, I've, I've been called in by the Royal Mail to exercise some of their sorting offices. Right. So, you know, if, if, if people like that are now taking uh, what could be seen as scientific, you know, scientifically as mumbo-jumbo, um, you know, it, it goes to show that it, there's as much magic around now, even in, with all the other evils that are going on in the world at the moment, um, you know, as there has been. OK. Well, we're going to come back to you again shortly. We've got some travel to take, but... Uh if you stay where you are, we'll uh, okay. be back with you, and you can explain a little bit about the uh, use of black cats and witches' hats to us as well. Yeah, uh, we'll do, yeah. need a bit about the history about those, but uh, back to you shortly, Kevin. Okay. Okay, that's no Kevin Carolyn on the show tonight. He's the High Priest of British White Witches. And this is Pete Edgler. Hi, Pete. Thanks, Justine. Uh, King's Drive in Esbourne. It's Pete Edgler for BBC Travel. Thanks, Pete. No problem. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, okay. Pete will be back for uh, two more travel reports before nine o'clock. But uh, now back to our guest this evening, Kevin Carolyn, High Priest of British White Witches. Hi there, Kevin. Hi there. So what have you got to do to get into your association? Um, well, basically, uh, initiation into a group or anything like that. I mean, really, some of the other groups that are around, they actually make it seem very mysterious and macabre and all that. They like to keep a, a, an awful lot of secret um, things wrapped around it. But... I'm quite open um, with the things that I do, and that seems to be what attracts people um, from all walks of life, you know, school teachers, you know, um, photographers, uh, teachers, uh, you name it, just about everybody you can possibly imagine, um, you know, I've had come along, and I can soon suss out people that want to use anything for, for dark motives or for their own um, gain. Right. I mean, the motto of my group is uh, for need, not for greed. 
So, you know, for any of your listeners out there who are thinking, right, let's get the lottery numbers, you know, it doesn't quite work like that. Right. Um, so it really is good goodness. It is It is good stuff. I mean, I never do anything for myself. That's another rule um, of my own. Um, it's, it's weird. The, 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 you know, the stronger I do things for other people and they actually work, then I seem to get some sort of feedback somehow. So, you know, it's good for good. Right. Um, people that do dabble in the darker side, that go into black magic and uh, those sort of realms, um, they, they find that it, they, it does work, but there's a big warning here to any of your listeners who may be tempted that it works, but there's always a very heavy payback, some sort of ricochet where, um, you know, perhaps you wish for, um, I don't know, 200,000 pounds, and the following day you have an accident and you get exactly 200,000 pounds in compensation, so, you know, that is a definite no-no. Mm. Um, but you were talking about all the... Um, bits you know, and pieces that are involved, the black pieces. cats and the witch's hat. Tell well, us a bit about those. Well, I've, I've actually got ten black cats. Ten? Ten, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm scratching already because I'm allergic to them. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, no, uh, we, got, we got one kitten and my wife wanted another kitten. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't know we'd got brother and sister. Mm -hmm. So after a bit of incest later and two litters, um, we've got ten and we'd never separate them because, you know, they're... they're all one family, and they are so unique and individual. Mm. Um, and why are they associated with witches? Well, in the in the Middle Ages, it was actually claimed that um, if a witch was caught and tortured, you know, for confession and everything, that their soul could actually jump into the cat, and the cat right. could flee. And what a lot of people don't know is that um, black cats nearly became extinct all across Europe because of the witch craze. Um, now, it's lucky if a black cat walks across your path, um, Last year there was one behind me, and it was either jump over her or trip. So I did in fact jump, and mm -hmm. bo broke both bones in my lower right leg. <laughs> right. Um, so, I mean, that was a pure accident, but people out there could be thinking, ah, perhaps they're not so lucky. Um, but you believe they are? Oh, I think, I think they are, yeah. Okay. I mean, some people prefer dogs. I mean, owls can be associated. I mean, I know that's gone mad in Harry Potter. Mm. Um, but you're talking about the witch's hat. Yeah, you know, the that's the shape of a cone is apparently a cone of power. Cone of power, yeah, well, uh, I have my daily cone of power, but that's a cornetto, but that's another story. <laughs> um, no, the tradition is, obviously, like, you've got pointed spires on churches, mm -hmm. and uh, imagine the witch's hat. They didn't used to wear hats, but it's believed that the energy that's raised from the body and from the, the, the kind of wishing that's going inside the mind, mm. goes up to a focal point, like, a, like a, a cone on top of someone's head, and then beams outwards. And uh, I know that um, certain Christians believe the same about their prayer power. Um, having said that, I was actually asked to do a, one of my spells to stop um, mobile phone uh, repeater mast being actually put into a church down in Somerset. Right. And one particular lady quoted, that was on a, one of the BBC stations, and, and she actually said, well, I prefer to think my messages are going to God, not broadcast all over Somerset. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's that sort of thing. But, I mean, it's also the time of year on Halloween, because we've got All Souls tomorrow, um, when the, the dead are supposed to be able to make a transition back to our realm. Because mm, people act. don't think about the 1st of November so much, do they? No, they don't. No, it, it's all become Halloween. And uh, from what I'm hearing outside, I mean, it, it, it seems to be that Halloween is slowly being incorporated into bonfire night. There seems to be more going on Halloween now than there is on November the 5th. Mm, which is an excuse for a party, you see. Anything. Yeah, well, as long as people are happy, that's what I say. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, all sorts of things. I mean, yeah, the transition between the, the deceased coming back and reassuring their loved ones that things are okay. Is that supposed to be what happens tomorrow, then? Yeah, uh, yeah well, midnight tonight is supposed to be. But, right. Um, interestingly, how that happens around different parts of the world, I'd love to know. But um, also, also, it's a time... Um, when people used to light candles um, or even bonfires outside the houses or by their windows to actually ward off any evil spirits that may be coming through. They, they put what? Um, they, light, they light candles in, in yeah. their windows yeah. uh, or they um, have bonfires you know, right. in, the, in the back garden just to ward off evil spirits. So that's spirits. what the candles are about? That's what the candles are for, yeah. I mean, and what about the pumpkins and the turnips? Well, the pumpkins and turnips, I mean, I've got a pumpkin um, sitting looking at me at the moment, but um, they're purely, they've been added over the past 50 years. I mean, you know, they had, there was no tradition of anything like that before. Um, 
But again, you know, candles placed inside them again to ward off um, any evil, nasty spirits that may so come. The along. candle bit that's important. It is, yeah. I mean, you know, and and you know, for anybody out there that may be thinking, ah, you know, how does this stuff work? It's purely the power of positive thoughts. Mm. and all the ropes and all the paraphernalia that I use, I mean, they're, they're purely to attune the mind. I mean, you can yeah. do, it, do it, you know, in any sort of We're outfit. saying it's a bit like if you're going to do some sport, you wear your trainers and a tracksuit. Exactly, yeah, that, that's, that's the normal one I normally use. <laughs> gets, <laughs> it gets you... I, I know that feeling. It's like when I'm going to do a radio show, I often feel I've got to have my boots on and my trousers. That's it, yeah. Because I've got to be in control. Definitely, <laughs> Different yeah. show if I'm wearing a skirt, you see. <laughs> Absolutely. They don't know. I mean, you're the lady, you know, the lady behind the voice. Nobody well, knows who quite. you really are, do they? No, no, absolutely. Bit of, bit of mystique there as well. Quite, yeah. quite. But I mean, as I say, I mean, Halloween for, you know, for kiddies is a fun time. I mean, they used to put tons and tons of horror films on the telly, um, but uh, I've looked in the papers and there's nothing there, I don't think. No. Um, but, you know, a couple of simple spells maybe your listeners would like to try. OK. OK. We'll finish with those then. And I, oh, one last question I've got as well about okay. wizards and witches. So let's have a couple of spells and then the wizards and witches. OK. Well, it's a very simple one. Mm -hmm. um, what you actually do, you actually um, get an apple, cut it in half. Right. OK. And then um, write on a piece of paper um, a wish, remembering it's for need, not for greed. It could be a wish that, um, you know, maybe you, you felt Something happy. kind. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, you could wish something on your friends or, or you know, something nice, that so they have love and um, mm. nice things come to them. And then get a bit of ribbon and actually bind it around the apple. Okay. And simply go out and place the apple in the ground. And if it grows, um, then you know that the wish that you've made is growing. But there is one very quick way to cheat there, is that is to use mustard and cress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you can get your wish within about two weeks. Oh, right. Um, I'll stuff the apple then, we'll have the mustard and cress. Oh, or is that greedy? Um, that no, wouldn't work, right. would it? Because then that's greedy, you no, want it quickly. It's, no, it's not really greedy. It's, it's, it's just the fact that uh, by the time the tree is growing, you'll, you'll probably um, snuff it. <laughs> oh, right. OK, so that was spell number one. The spell second one, one. And the other one is, is an interesting one. Um, you've probably heard of the term dowsing. Um, where you actually have a weighted object on a bit of string. Mm -hmm. uh, and midwives actually use this to test out whether it's a male or female baby. Right. Um, literally get hold of that and, and just let it, just think it to swing a certain direction. Mm. Okay. With maybe, a ring on the end. Yeah, with a ring. Yeah, this is where backwards or, and forwards is, was male and round and round for a girl, wasn't it? Um, well, you've got to check your clarity whether yes is clockwise or, or no is anti clockwise. Oh, right. Or whatever. But just let it swing in a circle. Don't, don't you know, um, twiddle it yourself, let it do it naturally. Mm. And then in, visualize the face of a person that you, you know, haven't seen for a while, who haven't been in contact. And think in your mind, call me, call me, call me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's quite in, an interesting little experiment that um, people that do try this do get, you know, sudden phone calls from, you know, maybe a family member that they haven't heard from for weeks. Right. OK, well, that's quite a good one. If anybody tries that tonight, then uh, do give us a call if it works or uh, over the next few days. I'm sure a few people will have noted that, Kevin. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Now, we are just about to leave you, but I must ask you before you disappear, because I thought the difference, and this is very basic and naive, but I don't care sharing it with people. I'm going to go yeah, tell Yeah, male, <laughs> female, I thought male for wizard, female for witch. But I that's not right, is it? Well, it, it is right, but I think in this age of equality, you know, that men and women are all equal, then... Basically, people call, call, you know, they call us whatever. Right. You know. So what's um, a wizard meant to be in contrast to a witch? Are they exactly the same they're thing? Exactly the same thing, or, and a warlock. They're, they're, they're right. all really the so same. So why way. have you chosen to be a witch rather than a wizard? Um, because it's the title I'm dubbed with by you lot. Oh, right, <laughs> every example. Time I, every time I say, oh, I'm a practitioner of earth magic, they say, oh, you mean a witch? And I say, yeah, uh, yeah go and on. And maybe then. you look better in black rather than green or a you know, bright colour, so well, that might got, be what it is. Well, I've actually got a brilliant red robe. It's, have you? Um, yeah, they, they call me the... Um, the equivalent of um, Santa Claus, uh, but a white witch Santa Claus, if you like. <laughs> um, obviously, if, if any of your listeners are interested out there, obviously they can write into their local BBC station. I'm sure you'll be able to pass any letters on for me. Fantastic. I'm sure they will. In fact, you've got a website, haven't you? I have indeed. For those out there on the internet, it's www.kevwitch, that's K E V W I T C H, dot co dot UK. And obviously, um, anybody that uh, isn't on the internet, they can uh, probably write into BBC Radio Solent. Certainly can. Or Oxford, Berkshire, Kent, 
or Southern Counties. Great. Fantastic. All right, well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, no what problem. are you doing for the rest of the night? Um, the rest of the night, I will actually be focusing on some spells for people. I've got some absent healing to send out for people that are sadly, you know, not feeling very good tonight. So it's plenty of good stuff going oh, it's, on it's tonight. Oh, it's 100% positive vibes, yeah. And a witch's work is never done, as they say. I mean, we're here um, all year round, not just on Halloween. OK. All right, good to Lovely. hear it. Lovely yeah. to talk to you. OK, you take care, take and care. Uh, I, I guess we might catch up with you next Halloween. And may all the magic be with your listeners out there as well. I'm sure they'll be pleased to hear that. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, follow that. Pete Edgler. Hello, oh Darkhead One. Oh no! Oh yes, you are. I told you I've been checking the website. <laughs> um, Warburton in West Sussex. Uh, temporary traffic lights on Maple Public Transport at the moment. More travel just before the news at nine. This is Pete Edgler for BBC Travel. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. No problem that, at all, that my dear. It wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be, really. What? Oh, what? Interviewing the witch? Yeah. Yeah, I thought he, he said he sounded relatively um, normal, for want of a better phrase. But that's no, right. I, I'm not so sure about the bit about cutting the apple and watching it growing in the ground. Yeah, that's. I don't mean to yeah. be sceptic or anything, but you know. Yeah. No, I, I think quite like apples. I probably rather eat it. I, I, I must admit, I was amused at the thought of, of people moving into a house nearby where we was going on, and yeah, we got new neighbours across the road, and yeah. uh, we we play up to them. What was he said? Did it? What was it? Kevin said he said he, they think we're the Adams family. So yeah, it sounds like he's got a bit of a twinkle in his eye, doesn't he? Really? I, I, I think so too. But he's got these sort of joke cut off hands in his front garden instead of garden gnomes. <laughs> yeah, you, you might spot his house in his garden then, mightn't you? With that there? Well, slightly. Yeah. All <laughs> right. Tell me something. Are you looking forward to the Harry Potter movie? I'm looking forward to everything like that, yes. I mean, I don't know that it's ever going to beat The Wizard of Oz, though, because, of course, with that being my favourite movie of all time, it'll have to be something special to beat that. What, you wanted it might to parallel it. You wanted to be Judy Garland? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you, you see, I've got the surname. Well, this is true. You see, Dorothy Gale, yeah. wasn't it? But well, um, um, didn't quite yeah, get there. Yeah, but, yeah, true. it's just the ruby slippers. I like red, you know. Uh, actually, I've got one for you to think of. People with surnames. You know, you, right. you'd have thought with a name like Gale, you ought to be a weather girl or something like that. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, yeah got, it's been got, said before, but uh, it, they oh. always turn me down. Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah, dear. they always turn me down. But, I mean, are there other people in the, in the broadcast industry that have got suitable names for what they do? I don't know. I well, don't know. Well, can I can can you of, get an... Go on, go well, on. I can, I can think of somebody who sits here several nights a week. OK. OK, well, doing Talbot? Tra yeah, mm. doing travel reports. Doing travel... Guy, is that, guy is that, called that, Talbot, because there used to be a car called a Talbot. Is that a bit of advertising there? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it we'll, isn't. We'll never work again. <laughs> Speak to you again shortly, okay, Pete. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. That's uh, Pete Edgler <laughs> with travel reports and various other things he's throwing in tonight. One more travel report before 9 o'clock. In case you just caught the end of that conversation that I was having there, it was with the High Priest of British White Witches, Kevin Carolyn, and his website, if you want to have a look at that, it's uh, quite uh, extensive, is all the W's dot kevwitch dot co dot UK. Now then... Time for a bit of cheery music. Yeah, couldn't get anything more appropriate tonight, could we? Than Mungo Jerry and In the Summertime. A couple of ghost stories on the way, one from Winchester Cathedral. 12 minutes to nine, BBC Local Radio. OK, time for our final ghost story of the evening. This time it's with Richard Watts. He leads tours around the darkly lit streets of the Cathedral...